Hi, this is Vanessa and Tim, and we are back with the latest news from the ASEAN region, and this is ASEAN News for you. The United States of America supports Timor-Leste to become the ASEAN permanent member. The Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris, makes the remarks during the ASEAN high-level meeting in Jakarta, Indonesia. She said, the United States will continue to support Timor-Leste in becoming a permanent member of ASEAN and taking part in economic development in ASEAN regional organization. In this meeting, the United States will continue to support Timor-Leste in its path towards ASEAN membership. In conclusion, I believe as leaders we must address global challenges of today while also investing in a long-term vision. On the same occasion, the Timorese Prime Minister applauded the United States' support for Timor-Leste to join ASEAN as a permanent member. Previously, at the 40th and 41st high-level conferences in Cambodia, ASEAN member countries declared Timor-Leste as the 11th member of ASEAN organization with an observer status. Australia to deepen economic engagement with ASEAN. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said his country is committed to deepening economic engagement with Southeast Asia during the ASEAN-Australia Summit in Jakarta. Albanese joined heads of state from the regional bloc to discuss ways to enhance bilateral cooperation and economic partnerships. Invested Southeast Asia Economic Strategy to 2040 sets out a practical pathway to deepen our economic engagement, complementing our significant body of work together. And that cooperation has gained significant momentum since we agreed the ASEAN-Australia Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. ASEAN is also an important trade partner for Australia, with a trade value exceeding that of the US and China. Therefore, whatever occurs in the Indo-Pacific will have a significant impact on both Australia and ASEAN. Therefore, ASEAN and Australia have the same interest and responsibility to keep the Indo-Pacific peaceful and stable. The final day of the ASEAN-hosted summit holds a series of meetings on security and trade against a backdrop of simmering tensions and open conflicts in parts of the world. Foreign ministers from the group had met to review their stalled peace plan for Myanmar, with frustration going with its military's failure to end violence more than two years after it seized power in a coup. Antonio Guterres says Myanmar crisis worsens global finance system fragmenting. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres called on the Myanmar junta to release political prisoners during his opening remarks at the summit with Southeast Asian leaders in Indonesia. Guterres said he remained deeply concerned over the worsening political, humanitarian and human rights situation in Myanmar, a nation besieged by war since the 2021 military coup. Addressing a news conference, Guterres also raised concerns that the world risks a great fracture of its economics and financial systems. There is a real risk of fragmentation, of a great fracture in world economic and financial systems with diverging strategies on technology and artificial intelligence and conflicting security frameworks. I commend ASEAN and ASEAN member states for their vital role in building bridges of understanding. In a wide-ranging speech that touched on geopolitical tension, multilateral development finance and climate change, Guterres called on world leaders to find peaceful and inclusive solutions to the challenges facing the world. Myanmar crisis and global tensions take focus at East Asia Summit in Jakarta. Rising global tensions and ongoing Myanmar crisis took focus at the East Asia Summit during the last day of the ASEAN Summit in Jakarta. Bangladesh President Muhammad Shahabuddin, who was also present in the meeting, called the international community to find a durable solution to the conflict in Myanmar, which has driven hundreds of thousands of Rohingya refugees to his country. Shahabuddin also said delays to repatriation of refugees and shortage of humanitarian support could put their entire region at risk. Mother of Humanity, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, sheltered 1.2 million forcibly displaced people from Myanmar on humanitarian ground. Even in the seventh year of the crisis, there is no solution in sight. Where is Bangladesh is pushed to the limits? It is 
the collective responsibility of the international community to find a durable solution to this crisis in its place of origin in Myanmar. Next, I would like to invite Meanwhile, speaking at the opening of the East Asia Forum, Indonesian President Joko Widodo urged fellow leaders to defuse tensions and not create new conflicts or wars. In a statement, ASEAN Chair Indonesia said regional leaders expressed grave concern over the lack of substantial progress on their five-point peace plan for Myanmar. Cambodian Prime Minister keen to enable constructive dialogue on Myanmar. Prime Minister Hun Manit said Cambodia wants to enable constructive dialogue on the Myanmar conflict at a business event in Jakarta ahead of the 43rd ASEAN Summit. Cambodia has been actively advocating and engaging in regional and global peace and security matters. On regional levels, as Cambodia assumed its ASEAN chairmanship role in 2022, Samdai Dekjo Hun Sen, the former Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Cambodia, led a high-level delegation to the Republic of the Union of Myanmar to advocate de-escalating tensions and enabling constructive dialogues among relevant stakeholders to achieve enduring peace and national development. We will work closely with all ASEAN member states as well as private sectors to foster inclusivity, peace and prosperity in the region and beyond. Cambodia stands ready to welcome all pers prospective investors to the kingdom where opportunities are abandoned. Hun Manet, who recently took over the premiership from his father Hun Sen, also said ASEAN needed to avoid using force against a sovereign state, adding that geopolitical rivalries were tightening. Foreign ministers from the regional bloc had met earlier to review their stealth peace plan for Myanmar, with frustration going with its ruling military's failure to end violence more than two years after it seized power in a coup. ASEAN has agreed on a peace plan, known as its five-point consensus, that calls for an end to violence and dialogue among all parties, but Myanmar's generals have paid little, more than lip service to it. Kamala Harris reiterates commitment to end Myanmar crisis and expand ties with ASEAN. The United States Vice President Kamala Harris reiterated the United States' commitment to press Myanmar to release its political prisoners and end the horrific violence in the country during her remarks at the ASEAN-US summit. And I am pleased that our collective vision for the Indo-Pacific is in strong alignment. We have a shared commitment to international rules and norms and to our partnership on pressing national and regional issues such as the crisis in Myanmar. The United States will continue to press the regime to end the horrific violence, to release all those unjustly detained, and to reestablish Myanmar's path to inclusive democracy. And we will continue to support ASEAN's five-point consensus. Harris told the Southeast Asian leaders that it was in her country's vital interest to promote a Southeast Asia region that is secure and resilient and emphasize the U.S. defense and deterrence commitment in the Indo-Pacific. ASEAN, which has warned of the danger of getting dragged into major powers disputes, is meeting with Harris, China Premier Le Xiang, and leaders of various partner countries including Japan, South Korea, Australia, and India. During summit in Jakarta, Indonesia, Japan highlights for support ASEAN. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida highlighted his support for the ASEAN, adding that the nation will cooperate with the bloc to ensure other nations abide by the principles of the ASEAN outlook on Indo-Pacific framework. <laughs> Japan strongly supports ASEAN's unity and focus, as well as the leadership of the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific. We would like to work together to ensure the many nations accept and adopt the principles and activities of openness, transparency, legality, and rules-based framework enshrined in the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific. Kishida was greeted by Indonesian President and ASEAN host Joko Widodo as he arrived for the ASEAN-Japan Summit in Jakarta before entering a meeting with leaders of the 10-member regional bloc. 
In the meeting, we wrote a call for Japan's investment in the $184 million a year ASEAN infrastructure fund and said the East Asian country can be biggest contributor in the realization of concrete cooperation which benefits the people. ASEAN leaders held an East Asia Summit, a wider forum that includes China, India, Japan, Russia, and the United States. In the declared center of Asia at meeting with ASEAN bloc. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi joined the annual ASEAN India Summit in Indonesia's capital after arriving in the Southeast Asian nation the night before. Modi at the meeting declared the 21st century to be a century of Asia and stressed that ASEAN is an important region for India's at East policy. ASEAN is the central pillar of India's at East policy. India fully supports ASEAN centrality and the ASEAN outlook on the India Pacific. ASEAN has an important place in our India-Pacific initiative as well. He also highlighted that building a world based on world order after the pandemic was essential going forward. The Indian leader also attended the East Asia Summit later in the day and also went to Delhi, chaired the G20 Summit on September 9 to 10. Chinese-funded factory provides job opportunities for Vietnam youth. A Chinese-funded factory in Vietnam has provided local young people with opportunities to better themselves and strive for a more prosperous future amid the boom of industrialization in the country. Dang Ti Hong and Trang Ti Cham Tu, two young women in Vietnam, are working at a factory that produces insoles. The construction of this factory was funded by a Chinese firm six years ago. Hong is invaluable to the factory as she acts as an intermediary between the local workers and management helping to defuse any situation that may come about due to the cultural differences, language or dissatisfaction. Hong is invaluable to the factory as she acts as an intermediary between the hometown at the age of 16 and found a job in the city. At the time, Vietnam was experiencing a boom in industrialization and the demand for young workers in the factories was high, so it was the perfect opportunity to get a foot in the door. Now she couldn't be happier. Chamtu plans to work in the city for a few more years and save enough money to open a store of her own. In the eyes of Hong and Chamtu, this venture is as Vietnamese as it is Chinese. They say that maybe there's nothing glamorous about the work, but there is a vibrant atmosphere, the spirit of hope as everyone is striving for a better future. Thank you very much, folks. Have a nice week this ahead. See you all soon.